Hello everybody. Today we're going to be shooting remotely, but in the SU4 mode. And I recently started shooting in this mode. So if there's anyone out there that has a lot of experience shooting in this mode, and if they see me say something that's totally not accurate, please feel free to comment and correct me. <laughs> Thank you very much. So since I'm shooting more remotely now and in the SU4 mode, I don't have to use my radio control units. And this is a very simple way to shoot. So in a nutshell, what you're doing is each flash unit, I'm actually using, I have two here, the SB800 Nikon flash unit. It's a workhorse of a flash. Uh, several years old, but it's still being used by a lot of photographers. And I also found an older one, SB80 DX unit. And you can set these both up to shoot in the SU4 mode. Very, very cool. I think it's really worth learning to shoot manually using your flash units because you're never going to have any variables. As an example, if you're shooting TTL, you have a dark background, a light background. You could get little variations in your exposure. By shooting manually, it's always consistent for the most part. It's consistent. So this is a very, very precise, accurate way to use light and not all that difficult. And you can even use the formula for the guide number. So I urge you to learn that. You can even make up little tables as an example. Say you're shooting ISO 400, 15 feet away and your flash is set to a certain power. You'll know that that distance requires a certain aperture of say F8. So you can even make up a chart. So if you're shooting on location, you can just use that chart. And of course, if you're shooting in your camera room, once you have your lighting system all set up, it's going to remain consistent all the time. Very, very simple. <laughs> so, but again, practice though, practice doing that, and that's going to help you achieve to a certain level of perfection anyway. So getting back to the flashes here, the way that SU4 mode works is that you're going to be setting your flash in the camera. Uh, you're going to be using that in commander mode and it's going to be, it's going to set off a flash that's very weak. So you want to make sure that it's weak enough not to affect your exposure. And your flashes here have a sensor and basically what it does is when the light hits the sensor, it's going to fire. And this works in the SB800 and also the older SB80DX. So once you have your flashes set to shoot in the SU4 mode and your cameras all set, you have your flash set to shoot in the commander mode. There you go. You make your exposure and it's going to fire your remote flashes. You just have to make sure that your on-camera flash here is set correctly. And in this particular case, it, it also works using the Fuji. How amazing is that? And I can even use this as a bounce. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And I also found that it works with an old point and shoot camera. I just happened to, to pull this out of the drawer and I just wanted to see if it would work with this and watch what happens. It does work. So I'm not saying that it's going to work with all cameras, but the ones that I've tried so far, it has worked. And something else that I discovered, if you want to lower the intensity of your flash on the camera, you can even, I've even held my finger over here and, and then it does reduce the amount of light when I'm using the point and shoot. And this weakens that light. So it's not going to have any effect on your exposure. It's just going to set off enough light to fire these units. So let's set up our flash units to shoot in the SU4 mode. And then we'll take a look at setting up our camera's flash. So first we turn our flash unit on. And then we're going to hit the center button, the SEL button, for a couple seconds until we get this menu. And we want to make sure that we have highlighted on the top right the dark square. You see little arrows, like squiggly arrows in there. And we want to make sure that's highlighted 
press SEL again, and then on the right hand side, you're going to see several different options. Then we're going to scroll down all the way down to SU4, and we're going to select that. And then now we have it set to SU4. Hold that down again a couple seconds. And then here we can see the settings and back of the flash. And you can see it'll say remote, so you're okay that way. You can also see that I have it set to manual. And I have it set to one quarter power. And if you use, you can scroll up and down. So I can set it a quarter power and it goes in increments of thirds. Now I'm on eighth power. And as soon as you find the power that you want, I'm going back to a quarter power. That's what I'm going to use. Then once you have that set, you would just hit select and then you're on one quarter power. Now keep in mind also that your flash output is going to be affected by I have a little dome diffuser here that I usually keep this on all the time just to get a little bit of a softer light and also the amount of zoom that you have on your flash is going to affect your flash output. Just things worth noting. But once you get your settings down, it will be consistent and I bet you're going to really love shooting manually with the flash. So this is the SB800. Let's take a look at setting up now the SB. 80 DX. So now we're going to be setting up our SB80 DX. We're going to turn the flash unit on. We're going to go in the center again, the SEL button, and bring up. Okay, and you can see here it says SEL is off. We also want to make sure that on the bottom left we can see that squiggly arrow. So we want to make sure, first of all, we want to find that squiggly arrow. So we're going to use the plus and the minus buttons, the up and down buttons, and we're going to look for, you can see in the bottom left is that squiggly little snake, and we want to make sure that we're in there, and then you can see that it'll say SEL and it'll say off. So using your left and right buttons, you could just set that to on. And once you have it on on, and of course you have that squiggly little arrow, you're going to press the SEL button again. There. So now we're looking at the back face of the flash. And here you can see we're set to manual. And if you're not on manual, you can just click mode. Mode goes from A, which is the auto mode, automatic, back to M. And you can see on manual mode, we're on one quarter power. And again, using your plus and minus, your up and down, you can change that. I'm going back to a quarter power. And then also notice on here we have our zoom. Right now we're set to 35 millimeter. And again, this is going to have an effect a little bit of your power output. So we'll keep that at 50. And that's it. So now we have our SB80DX set to shoot in the SU4 mode in the manual setting at one quarter power. So let's see if that works. Perfect works every time and we get the consistent power output when we're shooting manual. Now we'll take a look at setting up our built-in flash on our camera body. So we go to the custom setting menu and we're going to scroll over and down to E where it says bracketing flash. We'll scroll on that and then we're going to go down to where it says E3 flash control for the built-in flash. Scroll down, make sure you're at where it says commander mode. And we're going to scroll over and then you're going to see built-in flash. And notice I have mine set to manual. And if you look, it's 1 1 28th power. That is set very, very weak just to give off enough light so it'll fire the remote flashes. And I did some experimenting. You can also use TTL if you want to. And you got to make sure that it's set very, very weak. So I got some pretty good results using TTL. However, the compensation is minus three. We want to get that built-in flash weak enough not to affect your exposure. So I'm going to take it back to manual and 1 1 28th power and click on that. And that's it. So now we have our camera's flash set in the commander mode, which is going to fire our flashes remotely once we have them set in the SU4 mode. 
So let's say you have another camera to set up other than the Nikon. And in this particular case, I'm going to show you how I set up my Fuji. And then you can see I have my built-in flash here. And the neat thing about this particular camera is I can bounce it too. So let's go to the menu and we're going to go to, it'll say flash mode. So we're going to scroll over and flash mode. We're going to click on that. Okay. And we're going to come down and we're in commander mode. I'm going to click on that. Yes. And then you could change your flashes compensation because you want this to be a lot weaker. So we're going to go over to here and I'm going to go all the way down to minus two. So I'm going to use minus two for my flash compensation. And that's going to give my built in flash a lot less light than I need. And it's going to help me get the proper exposure when I'm using my remote flashes. So let's test this out and we'll take a few photographs. So we're going to photograph this day lily and we have our Nikon Speedlight SB800 bounced into a silver umbrella. And that's going to give us a nice soft light. And I'm also going to add a second flash that we're going to place. I'm just going to set it down in the back and a little bit off to the side. And it's the SB80DX. And that's going to give us what we call a kicker light, which is going to highlight some of the back and the side of the flower. And that's going to add a little bit more dimension to our flower. So with the aperture set to f8 and we have both flashes set to one quarter power, this is the result that we get. So let's look at the result that we get if we use the built-in flash only. As you can see, it's very flat looking, harsh, not really attractive at all. There are a lot better ways of lighting than using this built-in flash, which I hardly ever use. So now I'm going to go back to the menu and I'm going to change the built-in flash to commander mode. And I'm going to set it to shoot manual at 1 1 28th power, which is going to give us a very weak flash and it's going to set off just enough flash to fire the other strobes. And now we're going to take a photo using just that one light, just the SB800 bounced into a silver umbrella. And of course we have the built-in flash set to commander mode, which is going to fire that SB800. So let's take a look at the image. Okay, so that's not bad, but I'm going to add a second light, which again is called a kicker light, which we have coming in from the side and the back, which is going to give us a little bit more dimension to the image. And now you can see that it added a little bit more light coming in from behind and to the side. Okay, so we're just going to try a little experiment. I'm going to pick up the flash and I'm going to hold it in different areas. I'm just going to hand hold it and I'm going to walk around with it. And then you can see the different results that we get by the placement of that second light. And there's one particular image where I held the light directly behind a flower and then you can see the backlight that's coming in. And this is something that I would use quite often if I'm doing a portrait, say, of a couple or actually even of an individual and I want to get some backlighting onto them. So I'll put a flash directly behind them and sometimes you can use that to get a silhouette or a semi-silhouette. So you can see all the variety that we got just by moving that second light all the way around in different angles and even directly behind the flower. So let's see what happens if we use the same lighting technique but a different camera. So first I'm going to use my Fuji X-M1. And I think it's pretty amazing that we can use a different brand of camera other than Nikon and yet it still sets off our Nikon external flash units. So let's look at the results that we get when using our point and shoot, the old Fuji camera, where we're going to use the built-in flash that's going to be used to fire the two Nikon flash units. So there it is. I think this is a great way for you to use several different flash units off camera without the need of using a radio control unit. You just have to remember to point the sensor towards where your on-camera flash is coming from so it fires. 
And remember, by shooting manual, you have precision control over your flash's output to get the results that you want. Thank you very much. Stupid moron. Oh, what a...